Welcome to the DJE Podcast, where you will learn about real estate investing from real life examples. Here's your host, Devin Elder. Today on the podcast, we're joined by my friend, Mauricio Ramos. He's the co-founder of 210 Management, and we talk all about his multifamily journey, his uh, corporate job, education and corporate job as a civil engineer, and then changing his mindset, getting into the investor mindset. And since then, they've been able to buy a whole bunch of multifamily deals. They're growing the company. It's really exciting. And so we talk about that journey, right? That what it took to go from uh, you know a good W two job into full time investor, partnering, building the management company, growing the type and size of multifamily units that they're getting into. And the whole thing. So I think it's going to be very instructive for those of you that want to follow in his steps. Uh, for passive investors, it's going to give you a, an inside look into how all this stuff runs and how we, we grow our companies and buy these kind of deals. So I think you're going to enjoy it. If you would like to be on the DJE investor list and you're not currently there, you can go to djetexas.com and sign up for a quick call with our team or request access and we can get to know you and build that relationship and then you can see future projects that come out. And then if you're wanting to accelerate your business as an operator and go out and do these deals and get access to more operators to passively invest with, check out apartmenteducators.com. We've got a great free video series that I teach there. Um, if you're wanting to take the next steps in this business, it's apartmenteducators.com. Okay, let's jump into the episode with Mauricio. Here we go. Mauricio, welcome. How are you? Hey, doing great, Devin. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. It's an honor. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a real treat to have you in the studio here. And and this is your second appearance, I think, on the DJE, DJE podcast. So appreciate you jumping in. Yes, sir. Thanks. Um, for those that maybe haven't listened to the old episode or aren't already you know investing in your deals or whatever the case is, how about a little background on how you, um, you know, just your background in general, wh where you grew up, and, and then how did you get to real estate and buying these apartment deals now? Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. So my name is Mauricio Ramos. Uh, I grew up in Mexico. I'm originally from Yucatan in Mexico. Uh, I grew up in Matamoros, went to school, to high school, all the way through high school in Mexico, came to the U.S. for college, uh, went to Texas A&M, graduated as a civil engineer, um, did about 10 years of construction, uh, about into year seven of those 10 years of construction. Uh, met my now business partner Adrian um, and he introduced me to real estate and then we started I started going to RIA's uh, here in San Antonio and learning about it and that's how when I learned about real estate and you know the, the cash flow and stuff I was like okay this this is this is I think this is a way that I can get out of my W2 job forever and I can switch into real estate and retire early so I started doing a little bit of a little bit of uh, just training, changing my mindset. Read some books, rich at poor at cash flow quadrant. Then uh, my very first deal was this uh, mobile home. I just bought a mobile home. Just one, up, just one mobile home, not the park, just this, just the home. Did the land come with it? It was yep. just one mobile home. Yeah, used at, at a park, right? Okay, in, a, in an existing park. In a park. Okay. So, so bought it uh, cash fixed it up and then seller financed it out and then the, the buyer kept on paying the 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 land right for the for the lot right and cash flow right law of the first deal find another mobile home did that too did the same thing then i now i have two mobile homes and right. two th two down payments right so uh, so you were owner financing those you're taking what five ten percent down uh, on uh, on the sale price, like ten percent, and then what kind of an interest rate? Like a higher, higher, like ten percent, twelve percent. Yeah, for three years. Four what years. kind of uh, what kind of a renovation are you doing a mobile home? Like floors and paint? It's it's basic floors, right. paint, light fixtures, um, you know, doorknobs, um, faucets. Okay, so like a house. It's like a house similar to house, a house uh, or kind of what we do in an apartment, even. Yeah, that's true. It's a pretty simple renovation. Yeah. What uh, do you still have those? Uh, Two of those, those two, those two first ones have been paid, have been paid off. Right. Because this was in 2017. So those okay. have been paid off now. Um, and along the way, I got a third one, which is still paying. Excellent. Excellent. Let me go back to your meeting with Adrian, your business partner. How did you guys connect? So you weren't, 
you're, you're in construction and you've got this background and everything, which I think we can dig in a little bit later. That's probably a great background to have for the business sure. we're in, but you guys, you weren't already doing real estate investing till you met him. How did you guys connect? So, he, so Adrian was my intern. I was a project manager for a construction company and then I would get interns, you know, for a semester or something. Uh, from UTSA Adrian went to UTSA right so I would get interns and because of the company participated in, in internships with the school so Adrian was my intern he was there for about a year and he was doing already some wholesaling so he introduced me to it and and you know we we, we did some door knocking together uh, never really got a, a deal out of the door knocking, but it was a hell of a training. Oh yeah, uh, because getting getting myself out of my comfort zone. Oh yeah, that's knocking, the real work. Knocking on on people's doors and getting doors slammed in my face, but really uh, getting comfortable with those no's, right? Right. So, uh, then he left and he continued doing doing uh, wholesaling, and then I continued my training on multifamily, and then that, that's when I. Uh, bought my first 10 unit. I got, we wholesale a house together, $30,000 wholesale fee, split in half. Not bad. 15, 15. Yeah. I took my half and bought a 10 unit apartment complex in Pleasanton, Texas. Um, it was like 12% down, $12,000 down, 0% interest, and like 20 years to pay a thousand, a thousand bucks a year. A this is the uh, owner finance, the seller financed it to you? Seller finance. I like it. Yeah. I like um, it. it was a disaster. Yeah. <laughs> but with my construction background, I wasn't so scared about it. Sure. Because I knew I, I could do it. I knew budgets. I knew contractors. Um, so then with that, I wholesaled a 24 unit here in downtown, um, downtown san antonio which uh, you've you've had the buyer here in the i remember i remember podcast. that deal i love that deal and yeah. you should see it now i mean it is it is a great they've they've done a great work right but, um that was a six-figure wholesale for me so sure. that pushed that really put me into kind of like the next level so with that one i was able to say all right i think i can do this full time and i put in my notice work for a few more months and then quit my job yep and at that point adrian realized multifamily was the way right so he came to the dark side and that's when we started <laughs> working uh like side by side together we bought a 16 unit together which we brought like four t uh, four investors then we bought a 32 unit together we bought, brought like seven investors uh, then a nine unit which was a seller finance all these last three in the valley in the rio grande valley right. south texas yep um and then our uh, we created after those deals we decided to create our own management company, which is uh, 210 Management, which is the, the company that we brand now. Uh, and now we manage the properties that we own. Uh, after that, we bought a seven unit here in San Antonio that's a mixed use on the south side. And we bought a 88 unit uh, apartment community in McAllen, which uh, unit you're KP in. And we're managing all that. Recently, we closed on a 42 unit, also in McAllen. Great location, very clean property. Honestly, we have to do very little to it, just a few updates, but it's running great. A uh, lot of room to, to grow on the rents. Sure. And we also bought a retail center in Brownsville uh, with the whole, it was a great location, it was a great price. And with the whole SpaceX, you know, uh, hype, we decided to buy it and it's been a, it's been a, a great property with with a little bit of a different animal with the triple net right uh, but it, it is it is a great property and fast forward to now we have a 249 279 unit uh under contract we're working in we're Out, working on outstanding it's such a great progression to see and the, and you you're not an anomaly right i mean we we hear these stories we know people that, that do this it start out with a house or something small and then a small multifamily but then you kind of once you get some momentum like you said law the first deal you get that done now you're you're closing like these multi-million dollar deals it's i'd love to see it i mean that's my story too kind of start small figure it out maybe make some mistakes at a small scale and and then i mean you know i got a point I, where I didn't want to own 300 houses. It's like, there's gotta be a better way to do this. Right. And, and that's kind of the natural progression that people go through is to get into this multifamily stuff. A couple of big decision points for you that, um, 
you know, that I went through as well. And I want to see how that went for you. One was quitting your job. Like how, how was that really scary? Or were you like, well, I got a big fee here and it's, it, it's easy to leave the job. That's a big commitment, both, you know, logistically and just kind of mentally and emotionally making that that leap because that's a security blanket for most people, right? How did how did how was that process for you? It, great question, and it was definitely a transition, a, a hard transition mentally because for the last you know ten years, I had been receiving a, a nice check every two weeks. You know, every other Friday, uh, or, or every other Friday, I would be getting that nice check. I'm a civil engineer, right? So it's it's you know I had a good a good uh, salary. So going from that to no check, right? And like after I quit and then two, three, four, five, actually there was one check, right? After I quit, I got one more check, but then after that, no check, right? So that felt a little like unstable. Absolutely. But at the same time, you know, I had a little cushion with that, with that, with that big check that came in. And also when I, when we quit right after we quit, Actually, I think a week before we quit, we put that 16 unit apartment community uh, under contract. So at least when I quit, I wasn't starting from like full scratch. Right. Uh, I, we had already a deal going on. I had my, my 10 unit that we were working on. I had those those two mobile homes get, creating a little bit of cash flow. Um, so th I had a few things going on. It was definitely a, a leap of faith. Right. Uh, but I knew that for the last three years, I had been doing good as a, as a part-time. Right. So I had faith that I would do better when I would go full-time. But it was definitely a, a leap of faith. Yeah, I love it. I, I love all of that. That's exactly how it happened for me. It was I was two and a half years of really doing both, very intense, but also building up you know, passive income, building up experience, building up connections and all that stuff. So that when I did make the transition, probably one of the scariest things I've ever done, but it was a three year process. It was not an overnight decision. So, and I had the same philosophy. It's is, if I had all my time and energy, you know, I've already made it work to an extent with very minimal, you know, mm -hmm. time available with family and, and job. Uh, you know, the thesis was if I had all my time and energy, this thing could probably really go somewhere. Um, so I love it. So congratulations, because that Thanks. is a, a huge step. Thanks. Second piece, um, the management company. You know, it's it's a big decision. Um, we start management companies for control and for for profit for for NOI on the project level. Nobody really starts it to to get rich owning a property management company. There's a lot to it. Um, what was the decision like for you starting your own management company and what was that process like? Because that's a big transition. For sure. It, it was a it was a, uh, a big decision for us. Um, it, it, there's an interesting story when we decided to pull the trigger, but um, it was we we had we bought the first property. We had a third party property manager uh, local to McAllen. Uh, they were charging like eight percent and they were very. Um, like slow in the process of look, leasing. And they were just more interested in collecting rents and getting their 8% and that was it, right? So they weren't really geared to work with a with a with with an operator like what we do, right? Like full on remodel, a lot of work going on every day, a lot of contractors in and out. Right, a lot of CapEx dollars getting spent. Right, right. so we, we felt like we didn't get the support that we were trying to get. Then we bought the 32 unit and then we tried to say, we tried to negotiate a better, better rate with that first company, and they didn't. They didn't want to go down on rate, so we found another guy that would take over both um, for a lower rate, six percent. And kind of the same situation, and it was a little frustrating. Uh, they we couldn't get them to lease units, and we we're trying to push rents, and no, you should rent for less. Like no, we know we have a good product, and we know we're the highest in the market, but we know we can get it. And I mean, sure enough, like they, they would try to market for like a couple of weeks and then Adrian would go down there and lease four units in one weekend. Right. But, man, I mean, it, it's everything. It's there. Like, right. We have, we have a good product. The market can buy it. We just need to sell it. Right. And so we just got frustrated. I was traveling. This is like October uh, a year ago. I'm sorry, two years ago. Um, I was in Jerusalem. And uh, I had a call with Adrian and we both, both, I mean, Adrian said, hey man, like 
let's just do it ourselves. I got it. I can do it. Um, let's let's just do it. I, we can get it going. So that's when we said, all right, let's let's do it. We created two ten management and we started managing our own. And it, it all started with Adrian in his right hand, Christo. And I mean, now we have eight, eight employees. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And we just manage every 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 uh, property that we own. <clears throat> like you said, it's for control. Um, we are in a market that we're pushing. We're uh, for the most part we're the highest in the market, but we have the best product. So nobody's gonna sell the product like we can because we believe in the product, right? So right. Uh, that is also a very big advantage of of having that management company. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Somebody's got to really push this thing and have an owner's perspective, which uh, is a challenge with third party. Now, third party can work, but uh, that's great. So, you, you made the leap; it's up and running, you know. And and how has that how has that impacted your acquisitions now? Knowing that you're going to put your own management company on it, right? It it's helped when talking to sellers. Um, you know, they ask who's going to manage it. Hey, we have our own management company. We're going to bring in our own system. Uh, we have a little machine already uh, working. So w that's what we're going to bring our 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 uh, culture and our systems in place. So that that definitely helps on the acquisition side. It mm -hmm. also helps us. We have a better uh, budget and a better vision of like expenses, right? In, in a much more first-hand um, expense, you know, budget of what we can do when we're underwriting for a property, either it's in McAllen or San Antonio. And if we need to, you know, maybe we underwrite at four, right? But if we need to put it at three to make it happen, well, we know we can do it, right? It's our, it's our own company. Just right? make the so, decision. Right. And, right. and also having that economy to scale of, you know, now we have a few properties. So now we're at a point where we can hire a lead, uh, lead property manager or a, a regional, right? And then have one maybe senior property manager uh, look over two or three properties and then a couple of assistants. So, the, and then you start um, relieving some of the pressure of that payroll line item, right? Instead of Instead of each property on its own and then and then you have to pay the third party. You can you can move those pieces around to your convenience and and not be so heavy on the payroll line item for each specific property. Right. Yeah, that's a huge advantage. It's also nice too when you're going in to buy a property. You're not relying on. I mean, we we had third party management for a while, and then we've had our own management company now for a while, which we you know now that it's up and running, vastly prefer. But a lot of times with third party management, you're getting a budget from like a business development person who's trying to win your business. It's like they they're not going to run it. Right. They're not going to be on the hook for that budget. They're going to try and just close the deal win your business. Um, whereas if you're looking at a P&L or a pro forma for your deal, it's like you guys actually have to deliver on that. And it it just it just closes the gap when you're when you're looking at uh, looking at deals and, and trying to build that out. So talk to me, Mauricio, about how you got um, your experience on small versus big, right? I mean, you've done one off deals, houses, smaller apartments that you manage, and then now getting into properties that are, you know, 80, 100, 200 doors. Um, how has that contrast been been for you? It's been a great, great lesson to learn. At the same time, I feel like we've enjoyed the ride into going, like growing, right? In, right. And being able to see from, you know, the 10 unit to the 16 to the 32. And like you said, like maybe if you have a mistake, it might be a couple thousand dollars versus if you make a mistake on a 200 unit, that might be tens of thousands or even more, right? Right. So we've been able to learn that in, in for example, figure out our, uh, for example, on the property management side, figure out our systems on a 32 unit and a 16 unit, you know, an, about a hundred unit portfolio. And now uh, a couple of years later, we're gonna buy a 279 unit and we're not afraid of managing that, right? If right. Because we would have gone into that first, we would have freaked out to manage that property. Right. So now we have our system 
put together in which you just need to hire a few more people and then go full on and we can acquire these bigger properties and at the same time manage them. Um, you know, of course it is true what they say about uh, it is the same amount of work to buy a, you know, a 10 unit or 32 unit, same loan. You have to go through the same process uh, versus the, the 200 and some units, right? That's a hundred percent sure. Um, but I really think there's value in, in uh, more power to, to the people that go straight to the big ones. But I think there's value in learning on a, you don't have to go on a 10 unit, but maybe learning on a 60 or 70 unit and then grow into the bigger units. Uh, and, and at the same time, having those units at the beginning under your belt helps you have better conversations with brokers, lenders, uh, other sellers, other buyers. And you know, like that 88 unit when we bought it was our largest at the time. Sure. So talking to the seller, you know, we were, that wasn't our very first one, right? Hey, hey it is our largest, but we have a few and we've done this before. Um, same with the lender, right? They, we, they knew we were on the market. That was our second Fannie loan in the market. So they knew it was our, our, our largest at the time, right? And you came in and, and, and helped as a, as a KP. Uh, but the, the lender was already familiar with us and they knew we'd been doing this for a few years. So it helps to have that, those little ones. Uh, but it is, it is, this, it is pretty similar amount of work to go on a smaller one than to go into into a bigger one. Right. Yeah. And a little shout out to Adrian, your business partner. He was on the uh, DJE podcast. I believe it was episode 100. That's one of the best stories. We yeah. don't have to hash it out here. Oh my gosh. That deal was go here. It needs maybe it. one of the craziest deals that I've ever like uh, been involved with in, in at all. And I've seen some crazy stuff. That was awesome. I, uh, I don't want to steal it from him. If you have him again, <laughs> I want, I want, I want him to tell the full story, but right. uh, for this 279 unit, there's a similar story. Oh my God. Uh, broker was trying to get it from us when we were in the LOI process. Right. Um, a, uh, broker was, was calling the owner left and right every five minutes and the owner was ready to go with it with the broker for a little bit more adrian had to fly oh pulling out his old tricks I, adrian, <laughs> knocking on doors i bet right adrian had to fly to la and knock on his door oh my God. unannounced and got the contract the guy's got if he's fearless he is he's fearless yeah, yeah. I, that's i love it man yeah. i let him tell you the, the, tell the full story later but uh okay yeah, he, we had to pull one of those again Oh my God. And, okay. And I wasn't aware of that. We got to have him back on to tell that story and that's signed a uh, sign and got him back with a PSA sign. Yeah. Ah, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. I love it. Well, I can't wait to dig in on that. Um, and I agree that there's this progression, right? So bigger's better, right? For a variety of reasons. But if you're getting into this business, it's difficult to, with no track record to talk to anybody, mm -hmm. uh, blender investors, even right. Yeah. So if you're buying 150 units. Like, have you done this before? Right. If you could say, well, you know, I've, I did a bunch of houses. I bought a 10 unit, a 50 unit, a 70 unit. Now we're doing a hundred. It's like, oh, everybody likes that story. Sure. You know, okay. You've, you've gone through it. You've kind of built it up. Um, and that, that, you know, that's, that's, some, that's important. It is possible to start bigger out of the gate. You for sure need to have the right team. If you're going to, if you're going to do that approach. Um, so talk to me about your. Over time, you got you got to have the team, right? You know, you've got your your legal team, your property management company, your business partner, um, lenders. How about investors? How have you grown that over time? Because now you're doing deals that really you know require millions of dollars of, of equity on these projects. How have you guys treated that and, and scaled that over the over the years? That is a great point, and definitely there's been a great evolution in there. Sure. The, the very first deal uh, that that when we brought the, the, my ten unit, it was on my own, right? All my money, and then I doubled it up, doubled up. But uh, I got to a point where I needed to sell because I wanted my money back, right? So you sure. can only do so much with your money. So that's we a good point, and I, I do want to, you know, even if you've got investable capital, let's say you have a million bucks cash to invest. Well, that's that's one four million dollar deal. That might be a forty unit com apartment complex, which is money. fine. Right. But then, yeah, I mean, that's a million dollars cash, and you're gonna lock it up in one deal, and you're gonna done. And that's why that's why we turned to syndication um, to go do more deals. So right, so you pulled your money out of that, wanted to continue growing, right? And then, uh, so in the sixteen unit, we brought four investors, which I mean, one of my coworkers in the in the last construction com construction company I was in. Uh, 
we were we worked together and he knew me professionally so um you, they they say you, your investors are going to invest with you either because of you what you've done in real estate or what or what you've done professionally on your previous w2 life right, right. so this guy's invested with us because of what i've done in my previous w2 life right professionally uh and and um kind of the a little bit about the deal but mostly about us right and and um another investor was really putting faith into into uh into us and in, in the project right so and then <clears throat> on the next deal we've been able to also bring sellers along the way right so on on the next deal which is rare you don't see that a lot that's that speaks highly for you guys uh that the sellers are coming on board coming, coming back <laughs> right Great. so so on the 32 unit it was right after I wholesale the 24 unit. So the seller of the 24 unit invested in the 32 unit, right? Because he liked, he liked us. Uh, we had repeated investors. Uh, we had another uh, really good investor that we had met in Brownsville. We wanted to buy his property. We couldn't buy it. It was too large at the time, like 500 units um, portfolio. But he, we, you know, we, we connected really well. Um, that was mostly Adrian. And, and Adrian had him invest in this deal. So put him together some money we we went into the into the next deal um and as as we grow start you st we we had a uh meetup in 2019 so we connected with a few a few investors there so there's a, f a few investors that came out of all those meetups and then there's a point where you know your inner circle circle right you try to you, to gather money from there and then you go to the next circle which is like friend of a friend right or you know my my brother or my my uh uncle here that has some money and and start expanding that way and and then of course going into uh, seminars right you go to seminars you you meet all these people that if they don't know you, they might not invest with you. But as they start seeing what you do, right, you get them into, into your social media and they see that you buy this 32 unit, this 16 unit, they see what you're doing and they say, hey, I like what these guys are doing. Then the, the next deal comes on board. Boom. They want to invest in that deal because they've seen your track record on your previous deals. Right. And between friends and family, sellers, seminars and just as we expand here in town knowing what we do uh, doing what we do it we've been able to expand expand our um, our investor pool and at the same time you know partnering up with with people like you and able and other um, other very good investors and that has have also great pools of investors that we can partner together in getting to these bigger deals together Right. Yeah, I love it. Th that's a great overview for anybody looking to raise capital, right? I mean, it's that, that inner circle, friends and family, um, work colleagues, that kind of thing. Sellers, that's you don't hear that a lot, but kudos to you guys for getting your sellers to invest back in right. your deals. I love it. Um, and that's that's how it goes. And then, you, you know, over time, the snowball starts rolling downhill. It gets bigger and bigger referrals and you go full cycle on deals and things like that. It's one of my favorite parts of the business, getting people in a syndication because the, you know, I was talking to a guy who was a financial advisor uh, in a previous career last night, and um, you know, we know what pro what financial products people have out there, and a lot of it's garbage. You know, so a direct investment in a deal, not that real estate is going to be perfect forever or whatever, but for the most part, it's a pretty solid setup, right? As, as people are evaluating their investment vehicles, right? Do we say stocks, bond, crypto, real estate, whatever, like real estate's kind of always going to be a, uh, an important piece of that. So being able to structure these deals and, you know, we think we talk to a lot of investors, you and I, and our network, but you know, 99% of the population that has investable capital is not doing this. So there's a whole lot more people to, to talk to there. What do you guys see for the future? You know, what is, what's your focus for the next couple of years and where do you got, you know, what kind of deals you guys want to be doing? Where do you want to take the company? All that good stuff. So, um, our goal for, you know, 10 year goal, it's something like Blackstone, like something we want to be a big firm, awesome. uh, similar to something like Blackstone. 
Um, in the next few years, we are about to have 500 units on, uh, in our in our portfolio by the end of the year. Beautiful. Once we close on this one. Beautiful. So, pr in two or three years, our goal is to get to four or five thousand uh, more units. Uh, keep growing within San Antonio, within McAllen, and then slowly expand into in Texas. And, and internationally, definitely, uh, there's a few projects in the horizon uh, in in Mexico and you know more of touristy places in Mexico. Sure, San Miguel de Allende, Yucatan, and you know the the, the uh, uh, Riviera Maya, the Mayan Riviera. So that's that's definitely in the uh, horizon. Keep growing. Sure, keep growing the management company. Continue that that naturally, organically has to grow as we have more properties. We have to hire more people. Right. Um, and, you know, start to delegate a little bit of kind of what we do yet, you know, the, then you hire the bookkeeper, right? And you start hiring the investor relations and then you start growing the team. Right. Uh, still tight. We don't want to have a huge, o um, uh, overhead, but right. it's a balancing act. Right. But, right. uh, but keep it, keep it tight and, and effective. Yeah. That's exciting. Um, and you guys have kind of have, um, getting momentum is just so difficult and and getting those first deals done and those first set of challenges but now that you guys have that momentum not that it gets easy but you've got experience you've got it investors you've got deals you can point to um there's nothing preventing you from from continuing to grow that so that's exciting when that momentum's already going and you can just grow it what do you say to yourself or somebody in your shoes you know when you're just getting started right and and, and you know dreaming about maybe doing big deals or whatever the case is but hadn't done it i was there you were there what do you say somebody listening is there what do you say to that person it's not that difficult i mean you just have to change your mi mindset educate yourself and take action and then and then you have to continue doing all three as you continue you have to continue educating yourself you have to continue going to seminars reading books uh, learning from you know podcasts like your like yours um, and continue to learn what's what's happening, right? The changes in the loans and the changes in the law, uh, and then continue going uh, to uh, seminars and take take action, right? Continue taking action, um, and always always stay sharp. Go go bigger, faster, of course, right? Right. And uh, just just take action. You don't have to. I think I probably said it on the last one, but it's it's it, it's really I think it's really true. Uh, you don't have to have, you know, you, you don't don't worry about how you're gonna 1031 out of a property that you haven't bought, right? Uh, right. Worry, worry, worry about the loan. Worry right. about insurance. Worry about your investors. Step one, two, three, right? Get into it. Once you're in step three, you figure out four, five, six, and go slow, slow, right? And just just a few steps at a time. You don't have to figure out the whole thing, right? I see a lot of people that get paralysis by analysis and, and just, oh, well, how am I gonna, you know, 1031 of the property? Don't right. worry about it, right? Right, get, should get, I start a management company when I'm at a thousand doors? It's like, yeah, get, get one property. Right, Yeah. right. So, uh, and then they start, they get they get hung, hung up on, on what color to use in the business card, right? And they cannot go, go, go past that step, <laughs> That's right? Very true, yeah. Just whatever it is, you, you, you fix it as you go, but get started, just, just, take the take the leap get started start making offers and uh, you know a lot of people are like well when the offer gets ac accepted then what and we'll figure it out then right just send the offer right 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 i love it that's all good advice um you know i found that kind of a common denominator of people that are successful in this business have very proactively put themselves in the right room with other people doing it it's a challenge of having a w-2 job is say you know your career or my old career you don't have those role models you might have a role model for your boss or your boss's boss, but that guy's working a lot and he's not it's probably building, you know, this kind of generational wealth that we can potentially build in multifamily. People that have been successful in multifamily, they go to conferences, they sacrifice the weekend, they, they you know, put that time in, they get around those people that are doing it very intentionally. And then after over time of intentionally being around those people, you just kind of start to really become your peer group you know um it's, just, it's a very powerful very powerful effect there of intentionally being around the right peer group 100 percent, right like you know you are the average of the five people you, you spend time with so that's it you put put make sure you're spending time with the right five people that's right yep couldn't couldn't said it better well mauricio if somebody wants to connect with you learn more about your company what you guys are doing how can they do that 
uh, feel free to send an email to uh, Mauricio at 210, the word 2, the word 10, MGMT, like management, uh, dot com. Uh, you can go to our webpage, 210management.com. Uh, we have all, also Instagram, Facebook, 210 Management. You can you can look us up there um, in, in roles around in social media as well. Uh, feel free to send a message, email, and, and we'll be happy to connect. Outstanding. We'll link to the website in the show notes. If you're listening to this, you can just click through and go to the website. And you guys are great social media follow. follow. Adrian's always, you know, doing something. you too. <laughs> but Adrian's out there. Yeah. You guys are out there on social media. Showing the projects, right? A, a picture's worth a thousand words. I love following you guys' projects. Uh, so those of you listening, do that too. Uh, Mauricio, thank you. Love, love to, to catch up. I can't wait to see what you guys are doing. You know, we'll have a podcast again with you in another 18 months and see, <laughs> see what's going on then. But wish you continued success. Absolutely. Thank you, Devin. It's a pleasure like always. All right. Talk soon. Hey, thanks for listening to the show. I hope you found that educational, entertaining, inspiring, all of the above. If you are interested in seeing future DJE investment projects and you are not already on our list and in our portal, uh, you can go to the website, djetexas.com. There's a little button there to schedule a 15-minute call with our team, answer any questions you have, and make sure you get on that list to see that next project that comes out. Also, if you're interested in being uh, an investor that runs these deals, we've got a free seven module course for you at apartmenteducators.com. Uh, a lot of great free content there to ramp up your education in the multifamily investing space. Once again, thanks for listening. We appreciate it. We always appreciate a five-star review that helps the reach of the show. That's one way you can give back if you enjoyed it and we'll see you on the next one. Take care. Thank you for listening to the DJE podcast. For more information, please go to djetexas.com.